So at some point when you're working through problems on statics and strength of materials and you're trying to solve for forces, you're going to get to a point where you need to look at a two-dimensional member. In this case, we have a member that has both an x-axis, right, an x-axis and a y-axis. And that makes it a little bit more complicated, but really all we're going to do um, is to go through and solve it with the same equation of equilibrium we've already used for beams that are in one dimension, kind of the x-axis only. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, you know, what the maximum shear and moment might be in this beam. Or actually, we'll be able to determine exactly what it is. So you might be given the problem to find well, reactions of the sports, or you might be asked to find the maximum shear and moment. So we're going to tackle those two and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a free body diagram so let's draw that in and when I draw my free body diagram I like to make sure that I, I put all the forces back in and then I add forces for the support so here we're going to have dy dx and also we're going to have bx I'm going to draw in my dimensions as we use them but you always have to also remember to draw in your local and global coordinate system so in this case we're just going to start with our global coordinate system uh, of you know which directions we use for some of the forces in the x some of the forces in the y and some of the moments so speaking of the equations of equilibrium let's get started and using them so with this question i always kind of like to step back and look first are there anywhere there's only one x force or one y force that's unknown and if that's the case then we can start with that to solve for something so in this case what we can see is well at dy right there's only one vertical force and that's in dy bx and dx those are two um, horizontal forces we can't use one equation so we'll get started with our sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero so we'll start with well dy we can see dy is going up we can see this 300 newton meters coming down but that's the distributed force we have to find a resultant and the resultant force that we're going to use is basically going to be our 300 times the total length in this case it's going to be 12 meters so let's subtract that off minus you know, I'll put it in orange here just to be consistent, but 300 newtons per meter times 12 meters is our resultant force. So this is like our resultant. And there's no other vertical forces in this. So this has to equal zero. So when you do the math out, dy minus 3600 newtons equals zero. So dy equals 3600 newtons. I, I like to convert this if possible to one kilonewton per 1000 newtons. So we're going to get dy equal to 3.6 kilonewtons. Again, when you have units and kilonewtons in meters, you're going to want to try and get them consistent at some point. Okay, so one equation, one solution. That's a good start. So next we look and we see, well, we've already we've already identified that we have two x forces and we can't solve either of them directly um, with the sum of the forces in the x direction. So what we can do is we can look here and we can see, well, dy and dx both pass through a single point. They pass through point D. And that's always a great place to take moments if you're if you're not sure whether it's on a truss or it's a frame or whatever it is. Um, if you know that this point passes through two unknown forces, it's a great place to sum moments because immediately you know that, well, dy passes through that point, dx passes through that point, they're not going to cause a moment about that point. So let's take some of our, some of our moments about point D, and that we know that's going to equal zero. Anything in the positive you know, um, sense is going to be going or causing the, the structure to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. So we can see here that we have you know, three forces that are going to cause a moment. Five kilonewtons BX and 300 or, or this resultant uh, that we'll call R. Okay, so in this case, what we know is let's start with our five kilonewtons. Five kilonewtons is going to cause this structure to kind of rotate in a counterclockwise fashion that matches you know, our sign convention here. So that's going to be a positive moment. And that looks like this, five kilonewtons times, now we need the distance. And the distance is going to be what is it? Well, it's the vertical distance between uh, the horizontal line of action and point D. So in this case, what do we have? Well, if, if we have our line of action here, we have we know that this distance is going to be, well, nine meters, okay? So that's between the line of action of the force and the point where we're taking our moments, okay? So that's gonna be times nine meters. We'll put that in down here. And let's go to the next one. Well, next we know we have BX. And again, we're looking at BX times, what's our distance here? Well, we want to go from the distance between the line of action of the force and point D. So the, the distance between the line of action of the force and point D is going to be, well, 10 
minus three, this is gonna be seven meters. So let's draw that in, you know, times seven meters. And then let's look and see, well, which way does this cause rotation? Bx is gonna cause rotation in this direction, which is this direction, which is this direction, which is opposite of our positive sign convention. So we're gonna call that negative. And we can put in our negative sign here. So we minus Bx. And then lastly, we have R, and that's gonna cause some moment. Again, what we can see is that R is gonna cause rotation you know, in this direction, which matches our positive sign convention. It's gonna be a positive value. So let's write that in. Add R, which we already figured out from over here was 300 times 12, which is gonna be 3.6 kilonewtons. Right, times the distance of, well, let's look at the distance. The distance between the line of action of that force and point D is going to be, well, it's just gonna be half of 12 or six meters. So now we have our numbers and we can do the math, right? Because the only unknown that we have here is Bx. So if we, if we do the math out, what we're gonna get is Bx equal to 9.514. I, I like to carry three significant digits here. That way, when we do our moment diagram, we get, we get more accuracy, okay? So that's the next solution and that's a good thing. So lastly what we're going to do is we're going to use our last equation of equilibrium where some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. We're saying anything that's going to the right is going to be positive, anything to the left is negative. So we're going to start with, well we have five kilonewtons coming to the right, the five kilonewtons. We have bx going to the left, so we're going to subtract that off, minus bx. And then all the way up here we have dx going to the right, so plus dx equals zero. So we just solve for bx, so we can plug that straight in, right? We're just gonna take that and plug it in. And, and what we'll do here is we'll say, well, five kilonewtons minus 9.514 kilonewtons, you know, plus dx equals zero. We'll put the five and the 9.4 on the other side. And what we get is that we're just gonna get dx equal to 4.514 kilonewtons. So there are the reactions. And we're done, right? We solved for part step one and we solved for these reactions. So, so that's a good thing. Um, and what we'll do is we'll come back in a second and we'll solve for the shear and moment diagram. So if you wanna go there, click the end screen here right now. And otherwise, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.